the first step in sizing grid type or on grid PV system to determine the energy demand in kilowatt hour. So to do this, we need to find your monthly average electricity usage from your electricity bill. And then we need to determine your daily average electricity usage by dividing your monthly kilowatt demand to 30 days. So here, let's say we have monthly demand of 1227 kilowatt hour. So the daily kilowatt demand is 1227 divided 30 days, we have 40.9 kilowatt hour. So let's say we need to cover only the morning needs. We need to divide this again by 2. That's why we have daily kilowatt demand of 20.5 kilowatt hour. Second step is to calculate the size of the solar PV system. But before doing this, we need to consider the factors. First is the total daily demand in kilowatt hour. We also have the fixed sun hours, the amount of solar insulation in our area, and the losses. Now we have total daily demand of 20.5 kilowatt hour. And let's say our location has a solar insulation of 4.5 hours or the fixed sun hours. And then we need to offset for the losses of set. So the size of the solar PV system will be total daily demand divided fixed sun hours times the losses. So the size of the solar PV system without considering losses will be 20.5 kilowatt hour divided by 4.5 hours will have 4.4 kilowatt feet. And the size of the solar PV system considering the losses, we have 4.54 plus 4.54 times 10%. That's why we have 5 kilowatt peak of solar PV system considering the losses. Next is to calculate the size of the solar PV inverter. So when designing a solar power system, selecting the right size of the inverter is crucial. So one of the considerations with selecting inverter is the AC-DC ratio. So commonly, we're using uh, 0.8 or what we call the undersize and 1.2 to oversize. In our sample, let's say we're going to use an AC-DC ratio of 1.2. So basically, the AC or DC ratio is the ratio of the rating of the inverter by the rating of solar PV system. So the PV inverter size without considering losses will be 4.4 kilowatt peak times 1.2 and the PV inverter considering losses will be 5 kilowatt peak times 1.2. That's why our TV inverter size considering losses will be 6 kilowatts. The next step is to calculate the number of solar PV modules and to select their brand. So before calculating the quantity of solar PV modules, we must first select a brand. There are numerous manufacturers online to provide the high quality and reliable solar PV modules. So one of the examples we're going to use in our uh, grid type solar PV module from Jinko Solar. So we have Jinko JKM 370M 72 370 watts. So we may begin calculating the number of solar PV modules once we have chosen a credible brand and rating of a solar PV module. So this is accomplished by dividing the size of the solar PV system by the wattage rating of the solar PV module of our choice. So from the data sheet of the solar PV module, we need to at least consider and get the following. First is the Pmax or the nominal max power. Next is the VMP or the optimal operating voltage. IMP or the optimal operating current. The VOC, open circuit voltage. And the IC or our short circuit current. So by looking at the data sheet of our chosen PV panel, uh, this is Jinko in our example, the JKM 270-72V, we have this, we have 370 watt peak, VMP of 39.9 volts, IMP of 9.28 ampere, DOC of 48.5 volts, and IEC of 961. So to calculate the number of solar panels, we need to divide our calculated size of the PV system considering losses, which is 5 kilowatt peak by the nominal max power of our PV module. That's why we have 5000 divided 370. This is equal to 13.5105, uh, which is approximately 14 pieces of 
solar panels or module. So the total array power will be 14 times the P max, which is 370 watt. Next steps is to compute and choose the grid tight inverter. But before choosing the grid tight inverter, we need to be familiar first with the electrical system of our grid. So for most household residents in the Philippines, we use a single phase 230 volts 60 hertz electrical system. Thus, our chosen inverter should conform to this ratings. So for the for the continuation of our example, let's select a grid tight inverter from Solar X, which is the Solar X Power X1 Smart 6.0 PD single phase. So we have this data sheet from the Solar X X1 Smart. You can see here the X1 6.0. So we need to get the following: the max PV input DC power 9,000 watt, max input DC voltage 450 volts, max input current 12 ampere, number of Mbps track per strain, which is two, Mbps operating voltage, which is 100 to 530 volts. So, also, the nominal AC power is 6,000 volts. Or factor, we have 0 0.9. Rating output power will be uh, nominal AC times 0 0.9. We have 1,400 watts. Rated output power, so our PV inverter can operate from 220 volts to 230 volts or uh, to 40 volts. So we also have the max AC output current the 28.7 ampere in the nominal grid frequency range of 50 or 60 hertz. So to calculate the number of PV inverters, we need to divide the PV inverter size that we have calculated earlier. So that is uh, 6 kilowatts considering the losses divided by the rated output power. Uh, we need to divide 6,000 kilowatts to the rated output power of our inverter, which is 5,400 watts. So approximately, we have one piece of PV inverter. So AC generating capacity will be 5,400 watts. After that, we also need to consider the following. We need to list and get the number of strings of solar panel. So that is two strings. We also need to get the number of solar panels in series per string. We have, we need to divide 14 pieces to two strings number of solar panel string in parallel zero thus our total string voltage of solar panel will be the open circuit voltage of our pv module times the number of solar panels in series per string into seven so basically we need to multiply 40.5 volts times seven we will have 339.5 string voltage and uh, total string current will be 9.61 since we do not have parallel strings. So condition, the total string voltage of solar panel, which is 339.5, should be less than the max input DC voltage of our inverter. So in this case, that's okay. Also, the total string current should be less than the max input current of the inverter, which is 12 ampere. So we have total string current of 9.61, which is less than the max input current inverter. The next step is to calculate the size of the overcurrent and protection devices. So we will divide this to two, the DC side and the AC side. For the DC side, let's list the following. We have IEC, 9.61, number of parallel strings, one, total current per string, which is 9.61, since we have uh, one number of parallel strings. According to PC Article 6.90.2.2A1, the photovoltaic short circuit current states that the PV source maximum circuit current shall be 125% of the sum of parallel connected PV module short circuit currents. And according to uh, PEC Article 6.90.2.3B1, the overcurrent device shall be not less than 125% of the maximum current calculated in 6.20.2.2a. So, the size of our circuit breaker will be 9.61 times 125%, which is 12.0125.
To select uh, the size of the circuit breaker, we need to refer on table 2.40.1.6a of the Philippine Electrical Code. So it's basically the standard ampere ratings of first time circuit breaker and fuse. So here, the smallest uh, CV rating is 15 ampere, which is greater than uh, our calculated size of circuit breaker. So our condition, VD of the breaker must be greater than the total stream voltage of the solar panel. So let's say we have selected a DC circuit breaker from Schneider Electric with 2 pole and 15 ampere specification. So its VDC is 500 volts, which is greater than our total string voltage of 339.5. So our selected DC circuit breaker is okay. To select the conductor wires ampacity, we need to refer on uh, PC table 3.10.2.6 B16. Here, the smallest conductor size is 2.0 mm squared for copper. Hence, select 2.0 mm squared of THHN with an opacity of 25 ampere. So, the general rule here is that the opacity of the wire must be greater than the size of our circuit breaker. So, uh, when overcurrent occur, our circuit breaker will trip first and will not damage up. Next is on the AC side. So, for the AC side, we need to list the following. The BC rating of the circuit breaker, max output current of inverter. So, we have 230 BC and 28.7 ampere. According to PC article 6.90.2.2A3, the inverter output circuit current, the maximum circuit current shall be the inverter's continuous output current rating. So, here, our maximum output current inverter is 28.7 ampere. So, the size of circuit breaker will be Again, 125% of our max current. So we have 28.7 times 1.25, we will have 25.875 ampere. Again, by looking back on the standard ampere ratings from table 2.40.1.6a of the PC, we can select uh, a circuit breaker with an ampere terms of 40 ampere. For the conductor wire, we need to select uh, 5.5 mm squared of THHN with an opacity of 40 ampere. The general rule is that the actual current in the circuit should not exceed the ampere turns rating of the CV. So, pwede pa natin gamitin yung same values nila. So, for the grounding, we can select, uh, since grounding lang siya, we can select 2 mm squared of THHN with an opacity of 25 now we have the mounting structure so typically we have mounting rails l foot middle or inner clamp and clamp and cup grounding clip grounding logs and surprise kit so commercial available mounting rails are typically lengths of 1.1 meter 2.2 meter 3.3 meter and 4.4 meter for instance let's choose first 3.3 meter so which can accommodate three solar tv modules hence requires eight mounting rails on the top and down for 12 PV modules. So the remaining two PV modules can be installed in two 2.2 uh, modules. So for the L foot, L foot is connected every one meter. So three L foot, three times eight plus two times two, we will have the middle clamp or inter clamp multiply two times eight for the three three point three and one middle clamp for two 2.2 meter for the end clamp general rule is that we need to have at least two end clamp per mountain rails 8 times 2 plus 2 times 2 is 20 for the end cups so total end cups is 8 for the grounding clips so general rule is that number of grounding clips is equal to the number of middle clamps for the grounding logs general rule is that one ground log in one line of connected mounting rails so have at least four grounding logs. For the splice kit, we have four since we are going to connect 2.2 meter and 3.3 meter mounting rails. 